Now, Christmas is, of course, a busy time with food and drink galore, and it can be really hard to maintain your digestive health balance. Dietitian Orla Walsh and Maeve Madden, who suffers with digestive issues, join us to discuss how you can beat a festive bloating. I'm not sure you completely beat it, but you can do some things to assuage difficulties. Orla, Maeve, you're very welcome. Very uh, Maeve, much. I'm going to come to you first because we're talking about IBS, in essence, and, you know, as much as we're going to discuss minor digestive problems, and we all eat too much and we all feel a bit bloated, mm -hmm. but IBS is something different. And you suffered with it for years until you finally got a diagnosis. How did it affect your day-to-day -day life? I think IBS, it's just, you know, it is very difficult to live with. And, um, and that's why I decided to share my experience and the effect that it has on my body on social media, like on my Instagram page and my Snapchat. I think it was important to make everybody aware that this is a disease. And so many women do suffer from it. Um, for me, it is, um, you know, obviously it's gut related and it's to do with certain foods, but it's also very much to do with stress. And I felt that this year after my mom being diagnosed with cancer and um, myself suffering from polycystic ovaries, that the stress of all that actually made the condition so much worse. And, um, you know, on social media, I find that we portray, everybody portrays the very best pictures of themselves. And I think maybe there's like a false body image going around. And, you know, we see these girls and everybody looks like a Victoria's Secret model. Then you're kind of like, you know, where, is, where are all these people? So for myself, I felt it was important to be real and show you know, the real side of life and that you don't look like that every single day and, and this does were, happen. what were the symptoms you experienced? Severe bloating, just okay. severe bloating, cramping. But it wouldn't, um, during the summer when I posted, like, these pictures, it was because before it would have lasted maybe 24 hours and it would have been after I had, like, a certain meal. But it just wasn't going away. And I just didn't understand, you know, how to, how can I get this to go away? And it was really affecting my job and, you know, just general lifestyle. And did you have concerns, because we've spoken to previous case studies about this, about always needing to know where the nearest toilet was and having to be able to get to a toilet quickly? Was that an issue for you as well? <laughs> I, know, sure, I, know, I know. It's crass, but, but it's, but it's yeah. honest, yeah. Um, yeah. Going, to, going to the toilet frequent, it can, it can cause either, you know, frequent toilet usage or, or nothing at just all. nothing at okay. all. And for me, especially traveling a lot with my job, it would more be nothing at all. And I would have like three days where I wasn't going and then, you know, I was going a lot. Which makes you feel terrible. It's so uncomfortable, yeah, yeah. really uncomfortable. So it doesn't, it's not only physically affecting you, but mentally as well. Now, lots of people, because lots of, I think people dismiss IBS very easily. And uh -huh. I, I know you, a lot of people knew you, you were like, oh, she's just a fussy eater and she's one of those exactly. people. And then finally you got diagnosed and mm -hmm. you were like, ha ha, I told you there was something yeah. wrong with me. Was it nice to be finally diagnosed and put a name to what you were dealing with? Yeah, 100%, especially like with your, you know, your friends and your family and they, you know, oh, she doesn't eat that and she doesn't eat this and which, it, which is true. I would be really, really fussy. So finally, when I was diagnosed, you know, I could say, well, actually, I have a disease and I can't eat that because, you know, I'm going to look pregnant in 30 minutes. In 30 minutes? It would hit you oh, that quickly? Yeah, it could, be that. could even be quicker than that. And you'd be out for dinner and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm wearing a bandage dress and I'm like oh, trying to, you know, get in the napkin covering myself because I could literally feel myself swelling. So did it really affect your confidence? Yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Where you would actually go out for dinner and I would kind of be like, you know, and then people think, oh, she just doesn't eat because I, I wouldn't know what... So what, you'd stay away, from, you'd only be picking at your food. Exactly. And then I went for, so I decided to take a food intolerance test. And I always thought that it would be things like, for me, I think everybody's different, but I thought it would be like rice and, you know, junk food and gluten. And of course it was, it wasn't rice, but it was, you know, the gluten and, you know, certain junk foods. But even real foods like onion, garlic and broccoli. And I would have had broccoli all the time. Like yeah. every night at dinner, I would have been like, you know, chicken and broccoli. And, and broccoli is one of a huge, that really made a difference when I cut out broccoli. Isn't that interesting? Orla, you're, you're nodding away there <laughs> at, the, at the onion and the garlic mm -hmm. and the broccoli because foods that we are told continually are good for you, good for you, good for you, are not necessarily good for you if you have IBS. And that's where diet plays mm -hmm. a huge role. 
Oh, absolutely. So we can look at individual intolerances and often the low FODMAP diet can ascertain what intolerances you may have. But from a very basic level, at Christmas time, people drink too much, they have high fat foods. So they really need to start off some, somewhere simple and, you know, eat slowly, drink plenty of water. So even having a glass of water before a meal can have a huge difference. Mm. Um, then looking at how much fibre you have and the balance of your fibre. So are you having insoluble fibre, soluble fibre and how much of each of them? The average Christmas dinner, is that good news or bad news for somebody who has digestive issues? Never mind the amount we eat, but the, actually the, the, your average ham, turkey stuffing, cranberry sauce, is that a nightmare for somebody with IBS or can you navigate your way through that fairly safely? It's, it, to be honest, it's not the worst. The only okay. thing that springs to mind maybe is the Brussels sprouts and the excess alcohol. Stay that you might away have from the Brussels sprouts. But, you know... It's the, a good excuse, actually. It is, certainly. <laughs> but the thing is, is that what we must not forget is we're only 10% human. So um, we have 10 times more bacteria in our bodies than human cells. And even if we look at our gut individually, and, you know, when we look at the gut, 95% of the cells within our gut aren't actually gut cells. They're bacteria cells. So what science is kind of looking at is going, OK, so this has an important role. We know it affects inflammation and we know it affects symptoms. What strains of bacteria can we use and um, what can we use to make the IBS symptoms go away or reduce the frequency of symptoms in the normal day-to-day -day person without IBS? So unfortunately, there's not actually that many studies out there. And as a dietitian, I'd love to, our, our moral is he give three brands, but unfortunately there isn't. There's only one um, probiotic out there at the moment, it's Alflurex. And it is one that has been researched over 100 times. What you're looking for in a, a probiotic is that it goes into your mouth, into your belly and into your system and bypasses the pH and all the enzymes and survives to get and to your gut yeah. and actually lands in your gut where the bacteria, the bulk of it is. Um, so what they found is that this probiotic does have an impact on the frequency of. Blood. So maybe try that, steer clear of the Brussels sprouts, and ease off on the booze. Absolutely. Probably good advice for most of us, actually, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> Eat slowly. Eat I slowly. Water before and eating slowly. Mate, thank you for talking about it so openly because thank people you. look at you and you're this glamorous, gorgeous girl. So it's good to know that, you know, everybody's got stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being honest about it. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you, as you ever, Orla. Much.